Let's go, let's go to this thing. <laughs> huh, this is uh, an interesting set we have today, Sarah. That's because today in the journal we're talking travel. I'm Colin Walker. And I'm Sarah Gordon. And you're watching the journal. Welcome to The Journal, a show brought to you by the students of Centennial College's broadcasting program. Where we tell a variety of stories that touch on a diverse range of topics. Like Sarah said, today's show is about travel. And later, I'll be eating foods from around the world. One of the stories we have for you today will teach you how to pack a whole month into just one suitcase. Then we pack our bags and head to London. We come back to Toronto as a tourist and travel to medieval times and we watch a show. We travel to Centennial College's Morningside campus for their annual experiment where the emergency response programs and their professors work together to react to a mock disaster. Let's start the show with the first story where we learn how to pack. And I'm going to need those tips because I'm not a good packer. You got to roll. That's the way to go. I started to pack minimal because I needed to move a lot. I have studied abroad since I was 16, and every time I move, I needed to give up my stops in terms of moving expenses and so on. My belongings getting less and less. One day, when I moved from Beijing to Boston, uh, the cost was almost the same price of my overall belongings, and um, there was nothing valuable about my belongings anyways. I challenged myself only to bring one big carry-on with me. I listed the things that I used in one week. I brought them to Boston. I lived there for six months and I only needed to buy some toiletries and one snow boot. My name is Ayan Kim and I'm here to give you some tips for travel light. Roll your clothes. Clothes take up the most space. It can save some space in your carry-on. And bring black pants. Not the one that is too tight though. Something that looks decent enough and comfortable to wear. It's easy to match your top and it doesn't get dirty easily. Jeans are not a good choice. They are heavy and many formal places, like religious places, don't allow you to wear them. If you have two black pants, I honestly think you don't need any more clothes for a button. Use multifunctional soap. Second most taking up space stuff is toiletries. If you bring one multifunctional soap bar, you don't need to worry about all that huge liquid bottles. There is all-in-one soap in liquid type but because there is limitation of liquid for carry-on, hard bar soap is better than liquid ones. Try to use menstrual cup. Let's be honest, pads and tampons take up too much space. Don't forget to bring at least one pair of formal shoes. This is because of the accident happened when I was traveling Moscow, Russia. Uh, me and my friends made a reservation to one of the fanciest restaurants in Moscow. It was very rare chance. Of course, we prepared one good clothes. However, we didn't know that simple black slip-on shoes was not formal enough. We ended up kicked out and ate instant noodle in the hotel room. Good shoes takes you to the good place. It's never wrong. I, I get that those are the tips for packing in the best way, but if I'm honest, I usually get lazy and just cram it all in my bag. How are you okay with that? Don't you get your clothes all creased to go in? Yeah. Do you bring an iron? No. Well, you'll look great then. Okay, listen, I go for a thrifty, functional look. Thank you very much, Sarah. I think I can see that. Okay, well, listen, our next story is in London, where I have never been. Well, after watching this, you're definitely going to want to go. It is one of those cities that I really want to go to. So, I got tickets for a concert. 
but it's in London. So I'm on my way to the airport. I'm gonna take an overnight flight. And I realize I only have like a day, but I wanna pack as much as I can into this trip. My holidays are always jam-packed, so I made a list of everything I wanted to visit. The quickest way into London was the Heathrow Express, and it is pretty expensive, but it meant more time to be a tourist. I met up with my friend and we headed to London Eye. Unfortunately, it was typical British weather, so we decided the view wasn't worth it and we continued up the Thames. However, we discovered that Big Ben was covered in scaffolding, which was really disappointing. Genuinely though, as a tourist, I had no sort of understanding of London's geography and Downing Street is really close to Parliament. Funnily enough. Funnily enough. Like, it makes sense, but did not realise. It's a couple blocks away. So, made it to Trafalgar Square. And a good thing about Trafalgar Square is, other than Nelson's Column and the fountains, is the fourth plinth here is always different. So, if you go to Trafalgar Square, you may find something else. Um, it's morning now. Weirdly enough, this is the thing I'm most excited about, and it's a bowl of cereal. <laughs> Continuing on our sleep deprived journey, we used the tube instead of walking everywhere like we did the day before. Screens. With time running out, we had to be a little bit picky with our destinations, but of course we had to go to Buckingham Palace. Are you the Over here in other tourists and an hour to spare, we walked to the Household Cavalry Museum for an unexpected bonus. <laughs> Even with a lot of the tourist sites relatively close together, I didn't manage to get everything on my list. London's far too big to go into. It was a lot of fun, but I got too tired to really experience any of it. So next time, I'll stay more than 24 hours. Didn't you used to live in London, Sarah? I did, and it's a really great city because everywhere you turn, something's happening, and it just has tons of history. What was your favorite part of living there? Favorite part of living in London was probably just how multicultural the city and the food were. Reminded me a lot, obviously, of Toronto because we're such a diverse city. Well, it's good that you mentioned that because I am about to eat food from around the world. I must say, I'm a little worried, though, because I do love trying new foods, but I draw the line at insects. Well, I guess we're going to have to find out, and I think you're going to love this, Colin, because I have a blind Oh, song. we're making a game out of this, we are we? We are, yes. Okay, see, now I really think you're going to feed me insects. So what we're going to do is we have four different foods on this table, Colin, okay? I can smell it. From around the world. I can smell a lot from of things right now. Around the world. So okay, okay. multiple different countries. And what we're going to do is you're going to use your senses. Yeah, I Have a little move. sniff, have a little feel, give it a taste. You're going to guess where this <sighs> food is from. I'm nervous. I know. Are you ready for the first one? No. Okay, here we go, Colin. So, so first you one. You want me to feel? Yeah. Ah! Ah! <laughs> what is it? <laughs> what is it? Do I just like just rip a piece? <laughs> Let me guide you. Let me guide you. <laughs> what is on top of it? Oh, actually, I think I might know what this is. Take a bite. Okay. And oh, no, I don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. well, I don't what know are you what tasting it is. right now? What are you tasting? I don't know. It's like kind of cheesy. <laughs> But it's also kind of pancakey. Is it uh, good? Is it good? Are you like? <laughs> it's not bad. I don't. No, I don't really like it that much. Where do I think it's from? I think it's from like <laughs> Eastern Europe. I'm gonna say Poland. Oh god. Well, let's take. <laughs> Do I have a napkin? Let's take your blindfold off. 
and <laughs> reveal the dish. This is actually an arepa, and oh. it comes from Colombia, so you are wrong. Mm. Not wrong. wrong. Yeah, it's actually one of the most common foods in Colombia. So you've just tried, you're right, it is cheese. Okay, it's there cheese. we go, I was half there. Okay, exactly. I'm ready. So now we're on to the next one. Are you prepared? No palate <laughs> Do you need cleansers? a moment? Do you need a moment? Oh, no. We Here we go, just go into this. Okay, are you ready? Careful. Let me <laughs> oh, you haven't taken anything off yet. <laughs> All right. So. I don't. I don't <laughs> wow, it's a cup. Ah! <laughs> no. <laughs> no. What is it? Ew, ew, it's okay. Ew, it it's feels okay. like it's an it's insect. Okay. I know it's an insect. I will, no. <laughs> ew, what is it? <laughs> ew. Can you explain to us the taste? Like what no, is it? No, it's like crunchy and juicy. <laughs> Not in a good way? No. Not a good crunchy? Did you want a napkin? Yeah. There you go. Well, how about we take off the blindfold? You were Okay, okay, no, I'm going to guess the country. Yeah. I don't know. From like Thailand. I, I once ate insects in Thailand. Thailand. You know what? You're close, but this is actually from Korea. Ew, mm. what is it? It's called bondagi, and it is a Korean Ew. silkworm. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> Ew. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sure. It's I'm, a very it's common like, street yeah. food. It's actually eaten boiled or baked. So oh, you didn't have it boiled or baked. I'm sorry, Colin. Now we're moving on to the third dish. <laughs> Are you right, ready for I'll this let one? You reveal it. I don't want to touch it. This the one might be a treat or it might not be. Here we go. Oh God, why? <laughs> what is it? Oh, okay, this actually feels like it could be like kind of candy. Oh, this looks like it's going to be tasty. Okay, now I'm a little more excited. <laughs> Let's take a bite. Mm, okay. Is that better than the bug? Uh huh, way better. Good. I like that you, you put bug and then something tasty. Now, what are, you, what are you tasting? Where do you think this is from? It's a dessert of some kind. Dessert? Kind of like there's some nuts going on. It's not mm. balaclava. No, not ba baklava. <gasps> I'm not saying it right. Well, maybe it is. Mm. How the fuck do you say it? Give me one How final guess. It? How do you say it? Baklava. Baklava. Do you is think it? this is baklava? I think it's baklava, and baklava is from somewhere in Eastern Europe. <laughs> I'm going to go with the Ukraine. Is it baklava from the Ukraine? Now, let's, let's reveal. And I'm sorry, Colin, but you are wrong, because baklava mm. is actually from Turkey. Also from Greece. Okay. That's actually something that maybe you didn't know. The okay. Greek and Turks. It comes really from good. Both. Yeah, and you were right. It is filled with lots of nuts. Okay, I'm getting there. There we go. Oh God, so what's we the have last just thing one more. Be? Just one more, okay? So keep your hands here. <sighs> okay. Last one. This one's so a little bit different, Colin. So just give me a little. Uh, please. Some don't. patience. Some patience. Uh, I here want we go. You, uh, oh, Ready? Whipped cream. I'm hoping you're putting nope, whipped nope. cream. No, no. So you don't have to bend down for this one, okay? I'm gonna put it. You're gonna no. <laughs> Ah, ah, what is it? <laughs> oh, oh, it's a straw. Mm. <laughs> and what does this taste like? <laughs> is it just like a soda? <laughs> like maybe like this, a cream soda? From where though? Maybe it's a soda, but where is it from, Colin? <laughs> um, it's from um, um, Brazil. From Brazil. <laughs> okay, you know what? You are wrong. This is actually from mm. Scotland. Oh! It is the most common mm. and most popular drink in Scotland. It's called Iron Brew. Iron Brew! Exactly. All right, Sarah. So how do you feel about that? Uh, I feel pretty good, but it's your turn. I've got something for you. Oh, what? Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, God. I, I hit it somewhere around here. Well, it better not be any bugs, because I'm not eating bugs. Yeah. Oh, goodness. All right, shut your eyes. Really? Yeah, I don't know. Why not? Okay. Well, I'll peek, though. Yeah. I'm admitting that I'll peek. Do you no, you can't peek. I want you to touch it. Like, really get your hands on it. Is this cereal? No, it's not cereal. What? Yeah, now just eat. Tell me, what is it? What does it smell this like? Is what does it feel sweet. like? This is sweet. I'm going to think this is already baklava. It's a baklava. Well, I don't know. You're going to have to eat it. No, it's not baklava. <laughs> <laughs> not, not baklava? This is very chewy. Tastes like an oatmeal, um, an oat bar thing. Oat bar? Can I open my eyes? Yeah. That's it's a flapjack. Oh. It's a flapjack. But it's oats, right? Yeah, it's, uh, it's also from uh, Scotland. And it's flapjack. That's a flapjack, folks. Lovely. Well, I don't mind that. I'm glad to see <sighs> the bugs. How yeah. do you feel about the bugs? Was that your favorite dish? No. Oh, okay. Well, you know, it was weird. Yeah. It was weird, but that's part of being a tourist. Yeah, true. It is what is being a part of a tourist is being a new thing. Yeah. And so as somebody who's from Toronto, I wonder what it's like to be a tourist here. Like, what are the new things you can try? Well, to be fair, when I moved back home from London, I kind of felt like a tourist. Okay, and why was that? I just got so used to living in a different city, and when I came home, it felt so foreign. 
Uh, so I definitely need to explore Toronto more. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's uh, great because we have the opportunity to go explore the city we do. right now. Let's go sightseeing. With a tourist from Scotland. Mm. So let's go. Let's go sightseeing. I've Sight come to Toronto from the city of Glasgow in Scotland. Glasgow's known for a lot of things, with deep fried Mars bars, drunk people, there's me, and football rivalry. Toronto is a whole other world to me, so I'm going to go exploring and hope it goes smoothly. So my audio failed, but basically I'm in Union Station, which is the main station in Toronto, and I'm heading to the CN Tower and hoping that I don't get lost because I am just terrible with directions. So this is what I like to call the Dev Tunnel, because there is no way of knowing where you are in relation to anything. It's so long that I sped up the footage for you. As you can see here, the big tall building has to be pointed out by me for it to be seen. So this is the lift up the tower, and as you can see, I am terrified of heights. that fear conquering worked up an appetite so I'm on my way to get poutine because when in Rome eh? I can hear you wondering what is that black card you have there? And let me tell you, this thing is amazing. You simply load it with money and you can use it on any of the transit in the city. It's bloody brilliant. So this poutine place called Nom 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 is amazing. I went for the duck confit, which is basically duck with fried rosemary. Just look at that. Look how amazing that looks. Evidently, I was left speechless. I mean, look at the happiness on my face. And now, by the power of movie magic, I'm in front of a massive Toronto sign with snow blowing into my face. I'm going to be trying to ice skate and hope that I don't fall. Basically, Toronto is a wonderful city with wonderful people, even better food, and the public transport is just, it blows my mind. Because in Scotland, we have rubbish public transport, so it makes for a nice change to be able to actually get to where you want to go easily. I love Glasgow, but I'm always going to have a special place in my heart for Toronto. <laughs> it's, in, it's very interesting to see somebody actually compliment the TTC. Yeah, because we always complain about it. Yeah, I don't think I've ever had anything good to say about it. To be to be honest, though, the tube in London is quite bad. Well, maybe it's a big city thing. Too many people in one place. They're Probably. very impatient. Yeah, but do you know where we don't have to worry about inefficient transit, Colin? Northern Ontario. Yes, ah. yeah, but more so in medieval times. Ah, yes, horses are always on time. So let's go horse around. Horse around? In are we horsing times. around here? We're not horses. Today we're here because we're going to travel in time. Traveling is amazing, but traveling time is an opportunity that we don't have every day. So today we're going to have that opportunity. Let's see what's going to happen here. What are medieval times? The ambient of the place make you feel inside of a castle, especially because of all the armors, daggers and knives. But of course, it has a commercial aspect as well. It's going to be a two hours show and we're going to have also some dinner like they will have in the old times, eating with our bare hands. While we're guided to our seats, the servers and staff treat us like we're royalty calling us leaders and lords. I have some expectations, I really 
don't know anything about like uh, how people will live during these times. So it's going to be very interesting and also we're going to see some tournament going. I feel those kind of sports are very, very different back in the day. So I guess it's not going to be as aggressive. It's still going to be pretty instant, interesting to see. The horses are the most important part of the show. They give it life and they get everyone gathered around to see the tournament. We are going to support our team, which is going to be the Yellow Knight. And we are supposed to discourage the other riders so they have a worse tournament. First, we have presentations of the Queen's more beautiful horses, the Royal Guard and the Knights themselves. Eating is also a crucial part of the experience. The meal is the queen's favorite. It's about eating with hands is something that I will never ever The knights look for supporting the public and the tournament starts. The tournament is moderated by the Chancellor and consists in a battle of six different knights that fight to win the tournament for the Queen. They read the horses trying to make the other rider fall or fight them on the arena. The tournament has ended and we did travel back in time. It was an amazing experience. Uh, the fights were very credible and there's actually some surprise moments. What do you feel being the queen? Oh my goodness, it's wonderful. So I've got all of these knights under my control and I have my Lord Chancellor and my Lord Marshal and after my father passed away, it was a chance for me to finally take up and do something that no woman in our kingdom has ever done before. So it's a big challenge, but it's wonderful. I remember going to medieval times as a child and they had these really sweet wooden swords and shields as merchandise. Did they? Always wanted them, never got them. Oh, do you still want them? Of course I do. Who wouldn't want a sweet wooden sword and shield? Oh, well, I can give you this. We have the dog maker in studio with us, Valentina Vija. Okay, let's uh, go over to our friend Bosco da Costa, who's with Valentina right now. Let's learn about the dog. Hello, Colin. Hello, Sarah. Here I have Queen Valentina Villa Fernandez Hernandez Ferraz de Colombia. Welcome to the show. Thank you. So, Valentina, how was the experience at the medieval times? Is it really, is it really exciting as it looks like on yeah. your on your dock? It is. It was a lot of fun. It was very entertaining. I never did that before, so it was a new experience. It's very different from traveling. Usually, people just go travel. You book a flight. You book a hotel and that's it. But this is, this is a very different way of traveling. And people usually don't think about it. And you're traveling abroad without leaving the city. That's the best part. And how true is the theater, is this amazing experience to, to, the, to the medieval times itself? How close is it? Is it do, you, do, you, do you feel like as if you were in the 1300s? Um, let's say that till some point. Um, the staff is very good at keeping you inside the experience, the way they treat you, the way they talk to you, it's very nice. Also the actors, they're amazing. But of course the commercial aspect takes you out. Uh, because you remember they're selling you things there in 2019, so that part I didn't like it that much. But I feel like it's, it's a good experience, it's something that um, everyone should try. And how does it work? It's a competition between, uh, like among knights, right? Yes, it is a tournament. So there's different knights, they belong to a team with different colors, and then you're su you have to support your team. You belong to one of the teams. So what color was, was the knight that, that you were supporting? Yellow, and I actually won the queen of the tournament. You won? Yes, and what I did. kind of queen are you? Well, we'll see. I haven't figured out that yet. All right, and Colin, what about you? What kind of knight are you? Well, Bosco, I'm a lazy knight. Oh, well, that it's kind of a shame to hear Colin, because I thought you were president. Oh, really? And oh now, my god! Now I think I want to keep it. Well, well, no, hold on, hold oh. on. A lazy knight still needs weapons. Well, maybe we can share it? Yeah, and I think we're going to need these weapons for our last story. Now it's time for a mock disaster. Wait, 
This isn't the mock disaster? No, Colin. This is something that the school puts on every single year. It gives a chance for the hundreds of emergency service students to put, you know, what they've learned into practice. Like we're doing right now. Like we're doing now, but with a lot more fake blood. Okay, well, the fake blood is interesting. Yeah. We don't have fake blood we in our program. We don't, no. Not so. Come off easy? Oh, yeah. I was in Don't think of this as a um, as a competition. Don't think of it as an evaluation. Um, it's it's basically uh, to sort of put you in a position where you have to actually do things a little bit differently than you normally do. What you are going to see is a vast number of patients, right? So big, big challenges with priority setting, time management. What will happen is when when we go live. They're going to start calling 911 upstairs and then they're going to dispatch you out. Okay, so why don't we go to our areas where we're actually going to be. Um, it sounds like the staff are sort of finishing up with their orientation as well. Um, if you're feeling a little uneasy, that's okay. Don't worry about it. It will settle in once, you, once the activity starts. Eight three zero six. We're just approaching scene. Oh man. Can you tell me some shortness of breath? We apply mm -hmm. oxygen and our mm -hmm. 15 liters per minute. Mm -hmm. We're also, we inserted a line. We can't bolus him because out of our protocol because of fluid in the lungs. Okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, we've got an IV ready for you guys. Uh, there's people who are done. There's pardon? people who are hurt. Why are you guys not doing anything? There are no doctors here. One, two, three. Stand, turn, and pivot. Okay, sir, let's get you on our stretcher. Go ahead. Yeah. Where I could find primary IV tubing here because we're out. We're we're very low on supplies too, yeah. Two, three. Sure. All right. So the nurses here are gonna take care of you now, okay? Good luck with everything. How are you feeling right now? How's your shortness of breath? Really bad. Really bad? Okay. So sweaty right now and I'm light. Okay. Oh jeez. Sorry guys, sorry guys. Sorry, go ahead, go ahead. Sorry. Sorry. Oh sorry. Ooh. Oh two. Someone got stabbed. <laughs> Okay, so second intercostal space, mid clavicular. Do I get a gush of air? Uh, sure. Sure. I hope so. Okay, a gush of air. 
She's on the better air and three. Yeah, NRV. Okay, she needed to decompress it on the right side, which is where she was decreasing before. Thank you. Cool. That was awesome. Okay. okay. You feeling better? I think you are. <laughs> okay, I am sweating. Oh my god. I was definitely not ready for that. <laughs> my mouth is so dry. Dude, I am sorry I was a lousy partner. It was like so hard to talk on the radio, triage all the rest of the patients. Yeah. Help you, oh my gosh. No, I don't want this to end. Yeah, it was a super helpful exercise. It's not something we get to do every day, so it's really exciting for everybody, and the fact that so many different programs could come together was really good, and yeah, it was a good day. Everyone supports it, and kind of comes to show their you know, support, respect for this like amazing learning opportunity, really. I mean, <laughs> it's a learning exercise. Nobody can do anything wrong, but I'm still going to shake my head. Of course, and I will accept the head shaking, and I will learn from mistakes. <laughs> Am I getting points? No? Okay. There are, I'm not taking away any points, so I can't <laughs> give you any points. Yes, you get a million points. Yes! Sarah, you got the uh, shield upside down there. Clearly, I won't last long in a mock disaster. No, no, we would not, because, you know, I would like to think that I would keep a cool head in that kind of uh, scenario, but realistically, I would be like a chicken running around with its head cut off. And I think I'd be the same. Well, I think we should stick to hosting. I agree with you. I think it's a good idea. Well, that's all we have for you today, folks. Be sure to come back next week for our show where we explore music in Toronto. You'll be joined by hosts Jason, Keisha, and Antonio. You'll also have a live performance. I'm Colin Walker. And I'm Sarah Gordon. And we won't see you next week. We will not. Because we have a flight to catch. Let's go. And we're off. <laughs>